Good morning, and welcome to Friday with the Rev. I'm Greg Johnson. I'm the president and CEO of GJP International, Greg Johnson Partnerships International, as well as serving as the chief advisor to the CEO of Emblem Health here in New York City, the chief advisor for family caregiving. And I welcome you to this continuing program. We're now almost completing two years on air each Friday. And I'm thrilled that we have this time together where we look at family caregiving, faith, and spirituality. I'm also so grateful that we have guests from all over the world, and I'm already seeing some of you in the feed. That's so wonderful that we can have this time together, this time to share, to learn, to give thanks, and perhaps get a new idea in our caregiving journey. Now, I want to just give a couple of points of uh, tools that for communication. If indeed you would like to speak to me, you would like to send me an email, we have a new email, I've been sharing it with you, and it is Greg Johnson at gjp-international.com. Once again, Greg Johnson at gjp-international.com. And I urge you to please feel free. I love to hear from you, and many of you write to me in various ways. Uh, this probably is the easier because it's easier to say on a broadcast. Some of these other email addresses can be very confusing. And while we're in the lockdown period, I have less access to the Emblem Health one. So I think this is the best one for you to use. Also, I want to invite and to ask your support. As many of you are aware, I have a, um, a YouTube channel. And it was suggested to me by my tech staff that the best way to archive each of these broadcasts is through the YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel is entitled Family Caregiving with the Rev. Family Caregiving with the Rev. Now, in order for us to do certain things of technology, I have been informed, because I know nothing about this, that um, we need to have subscribers, and we do have some of you who have, because you know more about this than I do, have subscribed. But I invite you to consider supporting this work, this ministry, this outreach, this conversation of a world of family caregiving. In order for us to do certain things that we would like to do, we need to show that we have people watching. And I am thrilled to report to you the programs throughout this pandemic have seen nothing but a huge increase. On Tuesday, we are doing uh, a few moments with the Rev. These tend to be five, ten minutes in length. And um, re presently, we're in a series entitled Recovery in Recovery. And I'm discussing ideas from the 12 steps that are very important and very significant and tools that we can use in recovering in this pandemic. It was something begun by Virginia Commonwealth University, and uh, I'm sharing it on Tuesdays. On Thursdays, to my great amazement, that was yesterday, we had over 400 people who sang along. Now, I know I heard you all. It was terrific. I just started a fun 15 minutes of hymns by request. Just a time for us to sing out. And you know what singing does? It increases our vibrations. We vibrate at a higher level, and we are energy. So we want to keep that up. It certainly helps with the depressions of lockdown. So that's on Thursday, and then Friday with the rim. So I ask you once again, if you would be so kind as to simply go to Family Caregiving with the Rev on YouTube and subscribe, you will be helping us to help others, and I thank you for that very much. Now today, is June 19th, Juneteenth, Juneteenth Day, a day 
that for too long was not really celebrated, not even good attention brought to it in a universal manner. Certain communities indeed it was, but we all need to be celebrating and we all need to be focusing on that because right now with the Black Lives Matter, with the protests, with the energy, the positive energy that is happening in America and around the world, let's truly embrace the freedom that was put on paper. But we know that what's put on paper doesn't happen in our lives until it happens physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And all of us, all of us, no matter what our ethnicity, need to continue to work on freedom. Freedom from relationships. Freedom from being a slave to one's work and job. Freedom from the closet. We'll talk more about that next week. Freedom from a relationship. Freedom from addiction. So there are many forms of freedom. And each of those contribute to realizing the freedom that was given on the Juneteenth which is what we celebrate and which we bring focus to today. There are going to be many, many programs on uh, the web and, and Zoom and all these other wonderful things. So I urge you to take a look at them. One of the sources that I have been following, uh, a very dear, dear friend and respected uh, colleague, the Reverend Doctor, um, I'm all right, now I'm blanking, Jackie Lewis, there's nothing wrong with me, the Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis at Middle Collegiate Church here in New York has been doing some extraordinary programs. She is a leader, a leader in unlearning white supremacy and taking positive action for Black Lives Matter. I have learned more from her and I continue to learn. She just did a two-day series that was so, so powerful. I still have yet to hear the second day because of my timing and schedule. But I urge you to consider Middle Collegiate Church, the Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis. And Jackie, I'm sorry, I can remind. Also this weekend is Father's Day. And so to each of you who is a father, whether biologically or as a father figure, a happy Father's Day. Blessings to you as you bless another. And bless each of us as we give thanks for our Father. No matter what the human relationship has been, we all are blessed with a Father in Heaven who loves us just the way we are and walks with us on our spiritual journey. And very often it is family caregiving that helps us to grow, to grow through the going through. It's not easy. No, it's not. That I wouldn't say that at all. But it is part of this life. And we are promised that we will never be given a task for which the strength to overcome it is not also given. If we are willing to be still, to ask for the help, to ask for the willingness, to ask for the strength. And it's always given in abundance. Now on Monday, here in New York, we're going to be going into phase two of the reopening. It has been a very deliberate, we have been very blessed with an incredible governor and his wonderful staff who have guided us through this pandemic. I urge all of you, as they have been doing, reopening does not mean that the pandemic is over. In fact, medical authorities tell us we are still in the first round. And oh, we pray with love for all the families who are in mourning, for the over 100,000 people who have died from this pandemic. 
I urge you, stay home as much as you can. Your masks, your gloves, the hand sanitizers, all the things we've been taught to do, the social distancing, they are acts of love. Think of them that way. Think of your mask as a positive use of a mask. It's not just about you. In fact, it really isn't about you. It's to protect the others. Seniors, I am that category, need to be protected. You see, it's not just about you having the disease or carrying the disease, but it's to whom you may spread it this very invisible virus, and yet it is so plain. We see its manifestation all around us. So please, continue to be careful. And, and this, I think, is extremely important. We are still in a very difficult time. There have been wonderful, wonderful persons who have given day after day after day first responders, people who are at the forefront of helping all of us to make it through. And it's not just the medical people. It's the clerks in the grocery stores, the clerks, the workers in the pharmacies, in the fast food restaurants, those who are doing takeout. Don't forget their goodness. Do something special for them. Say thank you to them, for these are people who are rarely thanked. And we will continue to pray for each and every one of them, all of the people who make life possible. These aren't the famous stars, the great athletes, the great uh, theater people. No, they're people who are often very underpaid and very much overworked. As we come out of the pandemic, let us not forget these people. As we look at our priorities and our funding streams, these people saved our lives. And so let's just now take a moment again to pray together for all in this pandemic. O oh Lord, thank you for the promise that you will never leave us. No matter what is happening, no matter the difficulty, no matter the situation, you are there. Your love surrounds us in all for whom we care. Underneath are the everlasting arms, and into those precious arms we surrender ourselves and our loved ones. Together with you we will walk forward. We will grow through each and every experience, knowing that you are with us through it all. We will trust and not be afraid. For you, Father God, Mother God, are ever near. All we need to do is close our eyes, take a deep breath, and reconnect with the precious gift of life the breath of God with which each of us was born. We now claim your divine presence in our lives, in the lives of our care recipients, in every situation and circumstance, and all is well, now and always. And we give thanks to you, O God, for all these crucial workers, for grocery store clerks, truck drivers, medical professionals, assisted living caregivers, family caregivers, restaurant workers, warehouse workers, farmers, mail and delivery workers, first responders, garbage collectors, janitors, sanitation workers, those who serve in the prison systems, those who serve in the homeless shelters, and, O oh, Father, the list goes on, but each is known to you. 
bless each, bless them now. We pray in your holy name, and together we say, Amen. This morning, I want to go to a topic that relates to the healing process. Last week we talked about blessings. We've been having some very deep and heavy discussions over the past weeks as we've looked at the pandemic, both of the COVID-19 and of the racial tensions that have taken place and are continuing fortunately, in a very positive way. But last week we began looking at blessings. Blessings even amid what seems like a terribly, terribly negative, difficult time. And this week I want to talk about rest. You know, Jesus, if we look at him in the Bible stories, he's always with lots and lots of people. He's healing, he's teaching with huge, huge crowds. And yet, what is so common to each of the stories, after he has given of himself through teaching and through healing, what does he do? He goes off to be still, to pray, to meditate, to be quiet, to have time, with his father. We often forget that because we have this sense that we'll just keep working and do this and do that and we don't take time to be still. And so I want just to read a prayer that also is from Peace Be Still and it's entitled Rest. And then we're going to talk about a few practical things that I think can help each of us in our caregiving situation, in our living situation. And right now, as I talk certainly about the pandemic issues, we're all caregivers and we're all being cared for, one for the other. So it applies to all of us. Please join me in this prayer. Be still and know that I am God. I am with you, I love you, and will never let you go. For I am not only in things outside, I am within you. Your own divinity, your own divine peace of heaven and eternity, now and always. O divine friend, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, how blessed to claim my spiritual inheritance. Awaken in me the willingness to accept your presence within and to grow more and more like you each day in eternal oneness with you, O Father, Mother God. As a family caregiver, often I feel totally overwhelmed I am lost, afraid, confused, panicked, and alone. But I am not. You are with me. You are with me. Keep me mindful that I am not God, you are. And together we can do all that is possible here on earth and in eternity for our loved ones. Help me to surrender my need to control and cure. I know that I cannot do these things. Help me to focus on caring and accepting the situation just as it is and being present in love, walking with another wherever that journey may lead. Keep me focused on today, not yesterday, with its regrets and errors nor tomorrow, which may never come at all. Keep me in today with all its challenges and blessings. Keep me ever mindful of your presence in all persons, places, things, and situations. In each I claim your spirit of love, goodness, 
and peace. And in that, in you, I rest in peace. I know that I can begin this day again and again, returning in this prayer or another to you, in whom I live and move and have my being. This I claim for myself and my care recipient. And it is so. Amen. And amen. Now, at the end of the prayer is something that I love. It was something that the Twelve Steps very, very much taught me. But it's something that applies to each and every one of us. Do you know that you can start your day over at any time you want? Perhaps right now you feel like everything has just gone the wrong way. Then stop. Stop. Halt. And start again. But before you start, take a moment to center yourself. To center yourself in the Christ Spirit within you. And know that God surrounds you on the outside as well. And one of the best ways to do that is with some breathing. Now, all of you know that with yoga and the other spiritual teachings, breath is the key. Well, breath is where life began, and so it is the key. But I urge in a very simple way. You've had a rough time. It's difficult. All right? Exhale. Anger. Fear. Resentment. Difficult issues and breathe in peace exhale fear breathe in peace do it five times and then perhaps just a quick prayer a prayer as simple as God Spirit Love, be with me. Bless me to bless. And start your day all over. I guarantee you it's going to be a very, very different day. And that's the gift we have. We can rest. We can take longer rests. We have less commuting to do. So even for those of you who are working from home, the commute time, maybe you can rest in it. Perhaps you can listen to some beautiful, beautiful music. Read a poem. Or just be still. And know that you are surrounded in love that all is well. We are growing through the going through. And we can choose. And I want to read this to you because I found this this week and I thought, what a perfect ending to our conversation. When we slow down, when we exhale and get rid of the negative, when we breathe in peace, we realize in every moment, I have a choice. I've chosen to feel grateful. I've chosen to be joyful. I've chosen to see my blessings. I've chosen to see the beautiful. I've chosen to be excited about the simple things. I've chosen to smile more often. I've chosen to thank God every single day. Think about these. May they bless, may they bless your life and give you the strength one day at a time for your caregiving responsibilities, 
not only to your immediate care recipient, but as all of us sharing in caregiving of the world. For what is caregiving? Caregiving is golden rule living, doing unto someone else as you would have them do to you. And there are all sorts of variations of saying it in every faith tradition and in philosophies. So we are united in caregiving. And that is a blessing. And now, that wonderful prayer from Father Richard Rohr. We conclude our broadcast. O oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen to our heart's longing for the healing of the world and bless those whose name we say aloud or in our hearts at this moment. Knowing you are hearing us better than we are speaking, we offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen and Amen. Thank you for being with me this morning. Have a wonderful Juneteenth, a very happy Father's Day, and a blessed week. Remember, we are sharing the caregiving. God bless. <laughs>